I recently posted a video of the week for the members of my channel, really a video reaction of the week, showing one of the qualification tests of the Orion European Service Module propulsion subsystem. Prime contractor Airbus assembled an OHB Sweden integrated a propulsion qualification model of the subsystem, which was shipped to NASA's White Sands test facility in southern New Mexico for the test campaign. Long story, well, still long, media was invited to a test in August of 2019 for an abort-to-orbit test case of the PQM. One of the channel members, Jolie Legal, asked more generally what Orion's abort modes are, so here's five to ten minutes on this. We can't go that far down this rabbit hole because there's not a great deal of public information about this topic. It's also not an aspect of an Orion launch that NASA tends to prioritize in terms of highlighting. Launch aborts are rare, which is the way everyone wants it to be. And we're now in an age of restricted information. Some of the abort information or contingency case information applied to Artemis 1, but we weren't allowed to ask about it. Or we were given little time to ask about everything. The information here is limited and the opportunities to become educated in open public are also limited. We will cross our fingers and hope that NASA and company are willing to provide time to discuss the ins and outs before Artemis 2 flies, but there are no guarantees. So anyway, these are the four launch abort modes for Orion. Mode 1 uses the launch abort system and is in effect when the LAS is armed on the pad a few minutes before liftoff and runs until the LAS is jettisoned in flight. In a Mode 1 abort, the LAS pulls only the crew module away from the rest of Orion and SLS, and then what happens next depends on the initial conditions of the abort. The rest of the launch abort modes are service module aborts. Mode 2 is called Untargeted Abort Splashdown, or UAS, and during that period, if the rocket fails, Orion separates from it, with the service module performing a small separation burn to get away. Once the spacecraft is a safe distance away, then the crew module separates from the service module and flies down to its parachute deploy sequence. Mode 3 is not applicable at this time, but hold that thought. Mode 4 is an abort-to-orbit case. If SLS shuts down late in ascent, but with a significant underspeed, by the time of Mode 4 capability, there's enough energy for Orion using the service module to make it into a stable Earth orbit. From there, the spacecraft could deorbit, re-enter, and splash down. This concept of operations goes back to Orion's origins in Constellation, when it was designed to be first an International Space Station crew transport, and eventually a lunar crew transport. Launch for both would have been on an Ares-1 rocket. The Orion conops and design were fairly well defined when Constellation was cancelled. It was somewhere between preliminary design review, which was completed, and key decision point C, which had not. The abort modes were part of that conops and design that carried forward. Mode 1 is divided into three phases. For low-altitude, low-speed aborts, once the LAS is jettisoned, Orion deploys the main parachutes for landing. For higher-altitude, higher-speed aborts, the spacecraft is high enough to execute a more normal sequence of drogue deployment and then main parachute deployment. In between, the parachute deployment sequence occurs in a more compressed period of time. On the SLS Block 1 vehicle, Mode 2 and Mode 4 overlap, so Mode 3 won't come into play until and unless Orion flies with a crew on SLS Block 1B or another launch vehicle if that's cancelled. These graphics were acquired through a Freedom of Information Act request by Chris D. Here's his social media handle. They are already a few years old, but as I've noted in several videos, Artemis 2 and Exploration Mission 2, as it used to be called, have been in formulation and analysis for over a decade. In these 2022 graphics that Chris acquired in his FOIA request, we can see a clearer definition of the Mode 1 aborts. Mode 1A is defined as straight to the main parachutes, Mode 1B is defined as straight to the drogues, and Mode 1C is defined as straight to RCS. For Artemis 1, there was effectively no Mode 1 either, because the abort-related motors in the LAS were inert. 
The jettison motor will always be used, and on a normal ascent, as on Exploration Flight Test 1 and Artemis 1, the launch abort system is jettisoned about 3.5 minutes after liftoff, and then Mode 2 begins. The difference between Mode 2 Untargeted Abort Splashdown or UAS on Ares versus SLS is that instead of an RCS burn to get Orion safely away from the Ares 1 upper stage, an AUX engine's burn would be used to get Orion away from the SLS core. An abort command would still trigger a command to shut down the core to facilitate quickly getting away from the rocket. The end of the Mode 2 capability overlaps with the Mode 4 aborts. In other words, the latest possible Mode 2 occurs later than the earliest possible Mode 4. Mode 4 is an abort to orbit or abort once around capability. If the core stage were to shut down before the vehicle reaches a stable orbit, but with enough energy, then Orion would separate and complete an ascent insertion burn. Rather than splash down in the eastern Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Africa, this would give Orion the capability to make most of a single orbit and splash down in its nominal landing zone off San Diego. As this recent paper notes, the Mode 3 abort could come back into play with Artemis 4, presuming that Orion and SLS are not terminated by the White House. Or that Orion flies on another launch vehicle. The SLS Block 1B version of the rocket has more payload performance capabilities, and it has a different ascent sequence. For Block 1, the core stage burns out at orbital velocity, inserting the second stage and payload into an orbit with a high apogee. Beginning with Block 1B, the core stage burns out well under orbital velocity, although how much isn't known in public. But Exploration Upper Stage functions as an upper stage in that case, completing the ascent burn and inserting into a traditional circular parking orbit of about 185 kilometers. Under those circumstances, there would be a period where Mode 2 capability ends before there is a Mode 4 capability. Mode 3 was better defined in public in the Constellation era. It was called a Targeted Abort Landing, or TAL. A targeted abort requires making an Orion burn during the abort in order to adjust the location of the landing area uprange or downrange. In Constellation on Ares 1, there were TAL aborts and RTAL aborts, RTAL standing for Retrograde TAL. Preliminarily for SLS Block 1B, beginning with Artemis 4, there is some discussion about an RTAL abort capability, where an abort during ascent could occur at a time where Orion might come down over Africa. It's going too fast to land in the Atlantic short of the continent, but too slow to completely overfly it. In that case, Orion would fire its engines retrograde to slow down enough to splash down short of Africa. The actual numbers won't be exactly the same, but if we look at the preliminary numbers for the ASIN events in the charts that Chris D got via his FOIA request, the LAS is armed at T-5 minutes or so, and a Mode 1 abort is available at that point. Mode 1 capability runs from there through liftoff, SRB SEP, and out to 3 minutes 18 seconds into the flight. Then Mode 2 capability runs from there to 7 minutes 30 seconds. As noted, there's a short overlap between Mode 2 and Mode 4. Mode 4 capability actually begins in this example case at 7 minutes 22 seconds, and core stage main engine cutoff would be at 8 minutes 14 seconds. So that's an early, fairly high-level look at the Orion abort modes. We will have to see whether we get more information from NASA exploration about ascent abort capabilities and timelines as we get closer to the Artemis 2 flight. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you found this video informative and want to find out what's going on with Artemis every week. This video was first for members of this YouTube channel. Thanks for all your help. If you're willing to make a one-time donation to support what I do, there's a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page in the description. Thanks again. See you next time.